What's up, fam? So we got Democratic Congresswoman Kareem Brown, who is fighting for her political career. But more importantly, she's fighting for her freedom. You know, if she's convicted of these fraud charges that she's facing right now, she could be facing up to 357 years in prison. 357 years, y'all. Goes like this. Several donors to the so-called bogus charity connected to former Congresswoman Kareem Brown testified on Friday that they had no idea their contributions were being spent on lavish trips and events. Friday was day three of witness testimony in Brown's federal fraud trial related to one door for education. Florida Democratic Party Chair Stephen Biddle testified that he thought he was paying to transport people to a charity fundraiser after Brown asked him to. Instead, Biddle's private jet flew to a luxury skybox at a football game. Biddle paid more than $11,000 for that flight. Brown's defense attorney, James Smith, pointed out that the emails finalizing the plane trip were written by her chief of staff, Ronnie Simmons, not his client. Witness Jack Hanania, CEO of Hanania Automotive Group in Orange Park, said he was invited to the football game after giving $7,000 in donations to one door. Biddle testified that his business had previously donated twice to one door for education, a total of $15,000 after Brown asked him to. Biddle testified that Brown told him the money would pay for seniors to attend President Barack Obama's second inauguration and a laptop drive for underprivileged students. Biddle said he made donations because he trusted Brown. After he left the courthouse, Action News Jax asked Biddle if he still trusts her. Kareem's been a hardworking public servant for this community and her district for a long time, said Biddle. This is a disappointing circumstance. Action News Jax asked Biddle what this trial shows the public about the nature of money in politics. Transactional money is a challenge, and altruistic money is an investment in our future, said Biddle. When Action News Jax asked Biddle what Brown had told him about the 22 federal charges against her, he responded, I've never discussed it with her. Okay. Okay. Okay, what stands out here? The draining of the swamp comes to mind. Now, I don't know how much Donald Trump has to do with this, but looks like we got the first big wig politician in a jam for corruption. 2017. Now, what's really, really disturbing about this is that out of all of the corrupt ass people out there in politics, you have a career black woman who's also a token to go down first. And she necessarily hasn't went down, but she is in a hell of a lot of trouble. I don't suspect that she's going to end up doing any considerable time. 357 years, I don't think she'll come anywhere close to that. I think at the most, at the most, even if she is convicted, she'll get five years because she is on the inside. She's, on, she's in the in crowd. She's been in the game so long, she's totally connected. She knows too many people. And she knows their secrets. She can go in and get favors. I'm sure she's done a whole lot of favors for a whole lot of powerful people. And she's do some favors. But she also knows a lot of secrets. And she could bring some people down too. 
And I suspect that if it came down to it and they put the pressure on her to give somebody up, I suspect that she will give somebody up because politicians, you know, they're not used to doing time. And if you know, if you got dudes on the streets ratting people out, you already know these type of people that ain't used to going to jail or rat you out in a heartbeat. So that's what I suspect that would happen if it came down to it. As is often uh, the case, when politicians get caught with their hands in the cookie jar. Uh, I think that both Simmons and Brown is going to end up getting a slap on the wrist. I really don't think anything major is going to come become of it. But I tell you this, I bet you a dollar to a donut, over 90% of all politicians are corrupt. I can guarantee you over 90% of them is taking that money under the table, over the table, around the table. Think about it. When, what was the woman named? Uh, Martha Stewart. When she went down for inside trading, she just pissed somebody off, man, and somebody just gave up. Think about that. You don't send a billionaire white woman to jail, a billionaire white woman grandmama to jail for under no circumstances, even if she kills somebody. That just don't happen in America. She pissed somebody off that was real powerful and they went after her and they got her. Gave her a slap on the wrist, gave her a little six months in a little old country club turned around, came on home, got all of her empire back on track. Now she good. But these people don't do real time. Let me tell you something. She didn't do nothing out of the ordinary. She didn't do anything that anybody else wasn't, wouldn't do. If, if I have a company and you my homie, You think I'm going to let you lose money if you've invested in my company? You think that if my company getting ready to go down, I'm not going to call you? Man, I'm not going to let my homie company go down. I mean, I'm not going to let my, my homie go bankrupt, lose all his money and see him lose his house and you know, his material possessions and have his kids out on the streets, his kids and his woman out on the street. I'm going to let my partner know what's going on. That's the game, man. That's the game. That's how it go, man. Everybody do it, man. Everybody do it. All of them play that game. Think about it. I'm on the phone with you or maybe I see you in person. We develop a code. Hey, Will, how you doing? Oh, man. It's all good. That's the code. You know, bye. Hey, Will, how you doing? Oh, man. I can't call it. That's the code. Sell. Or if we want to switch it around, we can say the same thing. Say, hey, Will, how you, how's it going? It's all good. That means... That means sell. Hey, Will, how's it going? Man, I can't call it. That means buy. Just switch it up. Man, they all do it. Why else do you think somebody like Michael Bloomberg, who was the former mayor of New York, he was a billionaire, and he went and got a job that was worth two, dollars $300,000, even though he didn't accept the money, he gave it away. On top of that, he gave the money away. So why would a person like that want to be mayor of New York City? How, well, you got to go. He's a multi-billionaire and he got to go into work five days a week. And he got to listen to people complaining all day. Then he got to hear the mouths of New Yorkers and other people talk about 
him and his family just he under scrutiny 24 hours and man money y'all money how else do you explain most of these politicians when they go into office they might be worth a hundred thousand dollars couple hundred thousand some of them might be worth nothing then after you know three four years they come out of office they're worth a million dollars or more they're worth millions millions man it's hook up man it's getting that money man it's all about connected connections it's all that corruption man they all doing it the only time you get caught is when you're flagrant when you're flagrant with it like really flamboyant with it and uh when you piss somebody off that's in a high spot say for instance like the dude quiet man i can't think of his last name but the guy in detroit who was the mayor the black guy he was being reckless where he was going giving all of the contracts to his homies and stuff and he wasn't breaking some of them white boys off and the white boys got mad because they was used to getting all them contracts and all of a sudden they wasn't getting anything <laughs> and they got mad and they went after him. they just said man we ain't getting no action man you know, we got to get this dude up, man. You know, he costing us way too much money. So he took him down. That's the only time you're really going get, to get caught in a jam if you piss somebody off that's in, 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 in a high position. You know, other than that, you're going to be all right. I would love to see the press conference, uh, you know, the press coverage on some of these uh, politicians when they get caught in a jam where the politicians... Uh, party affiliation is not mentioned. And, you know, that way we could avoid these knee-jerk reactions from both sides, the Democrats and the Republicans, where as soon as a Republican get caught in the jam, you say, ah, yeah, see that? See that? They're corrupt. A Democrat get caught in jam. Ah, them libs, man, look at them. They, they thieves. They da-da-da, you know? We can just kill a whole party system and just, just get off of that and just stick to the facts just stay right there in that middle and stick to the facts this person did this and therefore this person need to be handled accordingly and it has nothing to do with your party affiliation because y'all know as it's often said republicans and democrats they, they wings on the same bird so that's how I go, man. You know, uh, when it comes to this political corruption, it's pretty damn colorblind, y'all. It's pretty colorblind, and that's what it is. If you think it's not, something's wrong with you. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.